What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week from Cross RC, they're teasing a new JT6. This is a flatbed tow truck rollback style uh six by six so very similar to the traxxas trx6 ultimate hauler but obviously with the cross rc jt4 style front you know cab or body beyond that it's a very similar truck apples to apples if you're comparing it against something like the traxxas uh you know it's got the rollback that doesn't function like the traxxas as well it locking and unlocking differentials a two-speed transmission this one does also come rtr a lot of the crosses are you know available in kits or rtr but this one is going to be an rtr first it appears at least from the first teaser posts that they posted up at this point i haven't seen a price for a stateside availability of the cross jt6 but when that information does become available for us here in the us i'll make sure and let you all know here again next on the obviously going to be much cheaper side of things. WPL's got a new release. This is the C54-1. This is a Land Cruiser style release. The WPL's not exactly like the highest grade of RC. They're maybe some, they're like a upgradable toy grade RC almost is a good way to put it. But this little guy is being shown at $87.90. And it is an RTR that's pretty detailed out. It's solid axle. It's got a three link with pan hard up front. You know, the details of the hard body and a roof rack. I think it's a 1 16th scale. So another little bit of an oddball. But if you've ever owned one of the WPLs before, they've got their own, you know, kind of charm. Again, they're like toy grade but upgradable almost and i obviously have an affinity for like the d12s and d22s and 42s and all of those so not too bad the kind of fun if you're looking for something to play around with for less than 100 bucks next ran across this release from carton i've never heard of this brand before but this is the t410 rally kit it's a rally car as it would sound like from the name but it's just the chassis and the protector over the top of the chassis you'll have to add your own scale body there's a lot of rally appropriate bodies available and the rally side is kind of its own little niche where people have some really interesting builds some cool courses i've always liked the rally side this looks like kind of a premium kit at least as far as the things that it's offering with you know aluminum and carbon in a number of areas again i don't know anything about this brand though so not sure if it's got decent aftermarket support or just repair part support at that if you do run into any issues no idea you've heard of this brand you'll have to let us know looking at like their Facebook page they don't have a ton of fans but they've been around a while it does seem to be out of China uh, but I really can't find a whole lot on them kind of interesting though the kit again doesn't look bad but quality of you know what it looks like in photos versus once you get it in hand can be two completely different things Brazen Scale released a new upgrade chassis for the Axial SCX10 Pro. This is their pace setter chassis. It's got some changes to geometry, including 10 degree angled skid plate. Stock skid plate, I believe, is angled like around four degrees. This bumping up to 10. So if you want to change that breakover, you want to change the shock geometry, things like that new option from brazen scale and the price is pretty affordable retail on this is only 65 bucks you're gonna be able to swap it directly over with your existing platform it does modify the location of the motor mount and stuff like that just a little bit but overall just a nice little upgrade a little bit of tunability for your scx 10 pro and with the release of the scx 10 pro and of course just all of the axial vehicles up to this point that have been released that were servo winch capable Spectrum has finally released their own servo winch finally. Now this one came out this last week and it is a premium price, 150 bucks or right there around. The specs on it, I'm not 100% sure if they're being measured the same way as what we can expect from other brands because the specs are a little low. It's 180 ounce inches at 8.4 volts for 150 bucks. I just, I don't know if Apple's app, everything's being measured the same or what? Uh, but because that price for that performance doesn't exactly stack up well in the market, but could just be being measured differently. I don't know, benefit of the doubt, 
haven't seen it in person, don't know how it performs. We'll have to see. Uh, <laughs> at this point, speaking of that Axial SCX10 Pro, for those of you that may have purchased the rear flatbed file that I have on my website that you can 3D print for the back of that chassis, I also finally have the rear body mount for the cab only bodies that attach right to that rear bed setup. I'm putting that up on the website for free. So if you bought the bed, you can just go download that for free. If you didn't buy the bed and you happen to want the file for no reason, up to you as well. Probably won't be as helpful though. But if you're looking for a rear body mount solution for your cab only and you've got that bed, go check out that file. I'll link it in the description below as well as links to the rest of today's news stories. And lastly, for you SCX10 Pro owners, DSM Off-Road has a number of carbon fiber option parts. These range from like a front mounted tray where you can put like a battery or some electronics to a setup that goes right behind the front mounted motor to give you an area to mount electronics, possibly a battery, some things like that. Either way, some decent looking options here. Go check them out if you're looking for some more interesting ways to get things mounted inside of your project. Last week, Reefs RC released an aluminum mount specifically made for their RAW 100 servo. This allows you to mount that RAW 100 in place of a standard servo, whether that be for shifting a two-speed or a dig or a project, however you're using those RAW 100s. If you wanted to use them in the place where a full-size servo would normally be mounted, this would be an easy option for you to drop right in. These are a perfect solution if you've got like a VS410 Phoenix and you want to add the shifting servos for the selectable overdrive or dig. You can use this and those RAW 100s to drop those servos right in that project. And for some of you VS410 owners, Vanquish Products released some brass rear portal covers. These are specifically for the F10 portals and you can use them with either the plastic or aluminum axle housings. This just gives you the ability to add a little bit of rear weight if that's something you're after. Also released from Vanquish this week is the gray rubber parts tray. Just like the blue and the black one before, just in a new color. This is one of my favorites. These are one of my favorites. I love having these on the bench. And if you're like me and you maybe leave screws in one, having multiple is not a bad thing. You can have them kind of project designated. I'm a big fan of these things. Check that out. And the new gray color looks pretty good. SSD had a couple of new releases this week. They released some F10 straight axle specific brass knuckles. These are optimized for the design of the F10 straight axle so that you can get full steering lock without any clearance issues while adding a little bit of front weight. And to go with those brass front knuckles, they also offer some brass rear weights. These replace the rear lockouts with a brass disc that goes back there and bolts in place. These were just released, but they should be available soon at places like A-Main. SSD also released a couple of part options for the Axial UTB18, the Little Capra. They've got some brass front portal covers as well as some overdrive gears for those portals. Also for the UTB18, Furitech released a titanium cage. This is styled very much like the factory plastic cage, but made out of titanium. I haven't owned or seen any of their titanium cages in person. Not sure how titanium they actually are or if they're like a titanium color or finish. I'm unsure. The price on these is kind of expensive, but not that bad, which is kind of what makes me wonder if it's made from actual titanium or not. If you've owned one of the other titanium cage options, I'd be interested to hear if you checked it at all. Thanks again to eWin Racing for sponsoring this week of the Scale News Update. eWin offers a number of different styles of gaming chairs, similar to like what I'm sitting in here. This is the Champion Edition, and I've got the all black version, the diamond stitched rear back, nice firm foam on the bottom, adjustable in every way, including just the backrest angle, even if the chair is locked out, which is one of the features that I enjoy the most. Overall, it's a nice tall chair. Another thing that I appreciate, not always that easy to find in a nice chair. I spend a lot of time sitting in this chair while editing all of these videos, and I really like the wide seat base, the cast base for the bottom with the hubless wheels. Also just roll around nicely, even on the carpet where this lives its entire life. Ewin also offered a giveaway for one of these chairs and the winner was Quick Ride. So congratulations, Quick Ride. 
Hopefully you enjoy the E-Win chair and I'll make sure I get into contact with you here shortly so that we can arrange for you to get one of these. If you'd like to get one of these chairs yourself, they're available in a ton of different colors and a number of different styles. The Champion Series one is the one that I have and I really like it. You can go check out their website and if you decide to purchase one, you can use the code HARLEY to save yourself 20%. Thanks again to E-Win for sponsoring this week of the Scale News Update. And also a note, I'll never post a comment in there to say, text me and ask you to pay for anything. It's not a thing, that's a scam. I try and delete those as fast as I can. Yokomo had a new release for their Drift platform, and this is the LTS edition, Super Drift. LTS stands for Load Transfer Special. And it's a little bit wild to see these drift cars and how they've changed and progressed. The load transfer special has a super high position for the motor and battery. So it's almost completely up above the shock towers. They have a video of it running around the track and you can see it lift those front wheels significantly on power. Looks very realistic and pretty cool overall. Name's a little interesting, but you know. For you TRX4M owners, Club 5 released a Bronco Dash that you can drop right into that hard body TRX4M. Very detailed overall. The design looks pretty good. It says Bronco right in there. Obviously not worried about copyright issues at all. This does come in a white resin. So the photos show it fully detailed. You will have to do all of that painting yourself if you want to replicate that look. But looking to add a little bit of detail for the windows that you can see into on the TRX4M. This looks like a pretty cool little option. Speaking of TRX4M owners, if you bought the little utility trailer that you can pull behind your TRX4M, Traxxas also released a stake side kit that you can add to it. Give yourself a little more cargo capacity or you know, just add some style. But they also posted up an article on how you can weather it to make it look a little bit more realistic rather than the kind of like play school-esque wood that it kind of looks like right out of the package. Speaking of Traxxas though, they're also running a special right now. If you'd like to pick up two of the Fortec hot rods, you can get two for $2.99. So those on-road cars can be a little bit of fun, but they can be a lot of fun if you've got two of them that you want to run side by side. So they have two body styles of those, a coupe and a truck, so you can get one of each if you want some options, but get two of those, get out and do some parking lot racing. Not a bad time. And one last drift car to talk about this week, MST released the RMX-M drift kits. Now you can get these with a couple of different body options. One is the Miata, the other is the Porsche or the sport car as they called it, but they're a little bit smaller than typical drift cars. I think they're using a little bit shorter wheelbase. I think the M is like the, Tamiya M class or M, you know, maybe the HPI cup racers also were that size right in there. There's a lot of body options for that, but maybe not as many like drift cars that were previously available in that area. So kind of cool, especially for some of the body options. Maybe this helps open up to those. MST obviously does a pretty decent job with drift cars. That's kind of their area. This Wednesday, Matt will have his most recent episode of Road to the Rockies. We've been making steady progress and he's going to have a great update this week. I'm really looking forward to seeing it as well. So check that out Wednesday morning, bright and early. After that on Wednesday evening, you can come check out live stream takeover every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Should be a great show. Matt and I have a small announcement to make and some pretty cool mail call. So come check that out. Love to see you there. Last week I asked you guys what your favorite power system was in your RC, whether it's the one that you like to put in your vehicles the most now, or the one that just gave you the fondest memories, whether it was that very first RC you ever had, or the first brushless system you got however many years ago it may have been. There was a surprising lack of mentioning of like the switch over to LiPo. Like you can almost get bored before your battery dies now compared to, you know, when I first ever drove an RC car and it was like, you forgot you had an RC by the time the battery was done charging. For this week though, I wanna know where are you watching the scale news right now? And what are you watching it on? You're on your phone, you're on your PC, are you, at, are you on work time? Are you watching this video while somebody's paying you to do something else? <laughs> or are you sitting at home watching it on your TV? Let me know what, where you're at and what you're watching on. Scale news, big brother edition. <laughs> but with that, thanks as always for spending the time to sit here and watch the scale news updates.
much appreciated. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. With that, thanks as always for watching and we'll see you on the next one.